I'm Diego Cortez, welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Card Player, and today we've got Ben Land with us, very timely, because as we head into the main event, final table, he's got a lot of chips, he's probably the best known player, he's certainly the hottest player, he just won a bracelet at the World Series, he was second at another event, and he also made the final table in the 50k, he's been killing the cash games, he's got about 3.5 million of all-time winnings, but especially over the last year... He's, uh, he's been on a big roll, and he was a lot of fun to watch in the coverage. He's probably the most aggressive player, and we're going to talk to him about getting ready for the main event. So, you know, we had David Williams in while they were playing the 25K WPT, and he boldly predicted victory very confidently. So are you also uh, prepared <laughs> to make that sort of uh, statement? I guess I have to if it's a... It's a <laughs> to match you know. him. Um, I mean, I definitely like my chances uh, more than most people, and... Uh, I think I'm coming in really well prepared, so hopefully. Have you done any sort of special preparation? I mean, some players have gotten coaches or done some uh, more formal preparations. Um, what no. sort of things have you done? No, not really. Besides I mean, playing. I've been playing for six or seven years now, so I don't think I'm going to like necessarily get better or, uh, or more understanding of how to play it. Um, you know, I've usually done pretty well in the past at final tables, pretty good success rate, so just kind of use what, what I've uh, been doing for the last Years. One, one thing that's different this year is that ESPN had a lot more coverage of the final tables, uh, you know, leading up to the final table mm-hmm. than other years. It was always like the edited broadcasts that only show the big hands. And this year, the live broadcasts, or almost live, showed tons of hands, tons of action. Have you reviewed those and learned anything about your opponents or even about yourself in that? Um, I, I haven't yet. Uh, you know, I've still got a month, so I imagine the like the two weeks leading up to that, I'll. I'll definitely watch a lot of uh, of the game tape and uh, try you know figure out anything I can about who I'm playing against. I'm always curious about that. I mean, watching watching out of the hands, of course, it's fascinating just to see what happens. In your case, one thing that I thought was interesting was a lot of times you'd be staring down opponents, which is kind of unusual. I don't know if you even realize <laughs> yourself that you do that, but sometimes when another player was like facing the decision, and of course you were putting them to a lot of decisions in those last couple of tables, you know, you'd be staring intently at them. I don't know if that's something that you're even aware of or is conscious or. Um, I mean, it's, it's not like I'm gonna do that in like a, a, a like a live cash game or anything, but mm-hmm. you know, deep in tournaments, I feel like you know, you know, I get a little ADD and I start, you know, my mind starts wandering. I feel like I would just devote 100% of my attention to like the hand as it's going on to my players, I, I get, you know, better results and I'm going to play better. And, you know, if I pick up something on my opponents or, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, if it, it intimidates them, uh, usually if the person's a little bit intimidated, they, they give up more uh, reads as well. So, so you know, anything I can get, any information I can attain, you know, I definitely want to want to have. So more than anything, when you do that, you're actually picking up information about them, how they're reacting. Or... Well, yeah, of course. I mean, people people give off a lot with their body and their, and their face and... Uh, you know, if I'm not looking at them, I'm, I'm not going to be able to see it, so might as well. In, in the last, one thing that was interesting, you were definitely the, the main protagonist, I thought, in the last, you know, five tables and on. Obviously early on, too, because you had so many chips, but when ESPN was really covering the event hand for hand, you were on a lot. And it seemed like once they got down to two tables and were approaching the final table, you were not only playing a win, but you were focused on... Um, exploiting any players who might be trying to sneak into the final table is that is that accurate? I mean, you were you were playing a lot more hands than other players. Yeah, it definitely was. I, I definitely saw that. Um, uh, you know, there's like three or four different players who were just you could just tell all they were going to do is try to make the final table. Um, now that they're there, I think they'll play a lot differently. But and then when I got ten handed, I expected to play real tight. I played on playing real tight. You know, I had a big stack. I wanted to play real tight. And I just saw everyone just folding around. I was just like, all right, well, let's, let's see what happens, you know. And, you it know, seemed like I, you were uh, somewhat unlucky in that you had it pegged right that there were players who were playing to sneak into the final table or to protect their stacks, and you just got caught running into some bigger hands or hands where people were priced in. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to say I was unlucky in anything this summer, but... Uh, <laughs> well, you had a great run, but but specific in, there were specific hands where I think you probably had the right read mm-hmm. and ended up, unfortunately, running into hands where people either couldn't lay down or then you were priced in, and yeah. you ended up fifth in chips where easily you could have been first or second in chips if 
you well, know, if I would have won that hand against Maggie and Eddie, I think I would have been chip leader. Um, I turn, turned a lot of outs. That would have been dirty, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I would have accepted it. You know, I like Madden all, but I like his chips probably a little bit more. Yeah. Well, there was a case where he's about to go out. Instead, he comes in with second and chips at the you final know, table. You know, the guy from Belize had Queen's that hand and folded. <laughs> yes. And had course. I would have folded, he would have, Matt would have busted that hand. It's pretty of crazy. Of course. That was, I mean, watching on TV mm. with some friends of mine, that was the, the thing. For people who saw it or didn't see it, You'd, you'd re-raised mm-hmm. and with King-9 offsuit then Matt had a very tough decision and he ended up going all in he had ace jack correct or, and jacks oh he had pocket jacks mm-hmm. and he went all in and got pocket queens to fold and then doubled up against your hand otherwise he's out the whole dynamic is, uh, is different yeah, definitely a lot different right now they're they're playing the WSOP Europe which still counts for the World Series of Poker Player of the Year points and all that but I know that's a big thing for for Phil Helmuth, who was leading most of the time, and then you overtook him. You're not going to play in uh, in Europe, or what's your um, plan for that? No, you're I, here, so I I, I had planned uh, until a couple weeks ago to go, and then and then I had said I wasn't going to go, and then I was going to go, and I ended up I'm not, I'm not going to go. It's just it's not really something that interests me. I don't like really travel around and, and play tournaments, uh, especially you know there's good cash games here, and mm-hmm. and I uh, just moved into a new condo, kind of getting that set up and. So the glory of the World Series Player of the Year, which you still are likely to get, but that's not as important as no, preparing I mean, for the main event and just playing day to day. Yeah, I definitely think I'll I'll be a lot more prepared if I if I'm here and I can study and and uh, you know play play more cash and and you know the cash games are pretty good, so I don't I don't really want to leave those. Uh, I'm sure the games are good there too, but not know, like here. You know. I mean, one thing that I like, just that I've heard and and read about you, is the fact that. You've really devoted yourself to the to the cash games. I mean, people know you from your tournament run and from tournament successes, mm-hmm. but you've been playing mixed games, all the games for pretty high stakes, and uh, and really been playing regularly. I mean, uh, in other words, you're you're a well-rounded poker player and a and a grinder, <laughs> even if it's at uh, at a high level. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like to play all the games. It's important because you know during the World Series, especially. There's so many um, different games, and you know, if if you're, you know, at least okay at every game, then whatever the best game is, you can play it. You know, you don't have to be like, well, I don't know how to play this, so I can't play it. You know, if a good stud game runs, mm-hmm. you know, it's good to know how to how to play stud or, or if it's no limit or PLO or, or deuce or or whatever. I mean, people people who just see tournaments probably know that you won a bracelet in PLO. You were runner up in another PLO event this summer, and you've had obviously. Two deep runs now in the main event. If we don't know, two years ago you were 16th, and now you're in the final table and with a good chance. But when did you start to to get into all the mixed games and a lot of the limit games? Uh, I'd say probably like a year ago, uh, a little bit over a year ago. I, I started playing uh, after the World Series last year. Actually, I thought uh, I, you know I saw everyone playing mix, and a couple of my friends made a lot of. Good, a good amount of money playing mixed cash and all the mixed tournaments, and mm-hmm. I'd always wanted to learn them, but it never really did it. So I decided, you know, during this year I'm gonna learn them, so I know how to play all the, all the mixed tournaments and cash games during the summer, and then I ended up playing PLO all summer. So, but, <laughs> but but how do you go about doing that as far as acclimating yourself to all the mixed games, just by jumping in at at a certain level, or? I did it a, a not very smart way. I did it by just going and playing in Ivy's room. Mm-hmm. Um, after like I, I watched Sean D play a little bit online and. uh I actually watched him play like two sessions live, and then I just like I don't know, I just wanted to gamble, jumped so I just jumped in the games. Just and, jumped to the deep end. Yeah. Did that work out for you? Uh, well, 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 no, not, not, not at first, I mean, of at course. First, at first, it was more learning by, uh, by yeah. hard knocks or. You know, I played really, really tight at the beginning of that game, and uh, I was pretty much like break even or small loser. Mm-hmm. But you know, since then, I think you know I'm pretty profitable in the game, and. Uh, it's not bad if you jump right into the highest games and you're holding your own, so. That did work out. Yeah, well, I mean, I played an hour and a half of a 4080 at Bellagio, so I was pretty prepared. <laughs> Just some of those guys probably at least got you prepared for the uh, for the nittier uh, opponents. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop. It's been very interesting to talk to Ben Lamb. And obviously, as we head into the main event final table, we want to hear more, not just about the main event, but also about the bracelet that he won in PLO, his cash game success, and uh, everything else he's doing. So we'll be back with part two on Car Player TV.